you know, no matter how tired you are or how you're feeling, how hungover, which I'm pretty hungover today, it's walking on the stage is like when, when that hits you, you know, the, the, the connection of the crowd. It's still the same as 20 years ago, like yeah. adrenaline? Of course. It's still just as good, if not better, you know? I mean, it's also, right now, you know, with Zoli being the new singer of Pennywise, um, there's a new energy, um, new songs we're playing that we haven't played for 10 years, 15 years, and uh, you know, knowing that we can still do this is gives, like coming out and you know, 800, 1,000 kids, you know, still there to see Pennywise, it's pretty fucking cool. And you know, that even makes more energy. You can come in at them. Yeah, These right. guys are really unprofessional. You know, he's, he's, he's got a different style of singing. With Ignite, he sings much higher. Um, and he does it Pennywise. A lot of people say, how can you do Pennywise songs? But if you can sing high, you can sing low. So it was like bringing him in and working and working and getting in the studio and recording songs. And, uh, you know, there was the whole technical aspect of it. He, he's like a really good singer. Mm -hmm. So he, he got it pretty quick. Um, right. Then as far as, you know, being on stage and getting comfortable there, I think it took a few shows, you know, a couple, maybe five, ten shows to really start feeling comfortable. Obviously, you're scared because you're looking at all these fans that are 20-year Pennywise fans maybe in the audience that are there to judge you. Mm -hmm. um, so that's scary. And, and I, I think also the way that we run things, he's not used to it. We're really loose, uh, disorganized. You know, our crew members are drinking before the show, smoking some hash, you know, having some fun. And he, his crew members at Ignite you know, had a job to do, and they had to do it by the book. And, and we, we really kind of don't really care about the rules so much. And, <laughs> and so he's kind of having trouble adjusting to that. <laughs> but uh, we just say, hey, fuck you. <laughs> you know, this is how we do it. You got to come over on this side of the fence. But for him, you know, he doesn't drink. Um, he's drank in the past, so he gets pretty drunk and, and does bad things. So he, he's off the alcohol. So everyone else in this bus is, is partying pretty hardcore. So uh, it's it's a, definitely been a learning experience. But he's getting better and better every day. You know, and he really likes the lyrics of the songs and he likes the meaning behind the song. I think it's, you know, as far as the message being political or not political and how the fans respond to it, um, as far as our lyrics are concerned, it's, it, it varies. I think that, uh, you know, you have a lot of fans that really are interested in politics and they want to, you know, they want to understand more or or they're just learning about politics in their in their life and their government and, and that they can write a song and then they can understand that in their, you know, bring it into their world and apply it then it maybe has a lot of meaning for them. Uh, other kids, you know, I think fans, they just want to hear some good fast punk rock, you know, living for today. Um, but I think all of our messages is political in a way. It's, it's like social politics. It's like we can have a better life, we can do better, you know, follow your own rules, follow your own dreams. It's kind of the same old shit. It's kind of to the point of where it's boring, but it's kind of like how, how we always feel. It's like, you know, there's so many people running around like robots doing jobs they hate um, when they should be doing something they love. So we're always talking about that because we get to do something we love. Play uh, Obama, the president of change, yeah, he is, uh, you know, what are you, you going to say? I mean, for me, he's kind of a puppet, you know. Um, everyone hated George Bush. He really made a big mess. And um, Bill Clinton made some mess before George Bush. Everybody has always been calling us the X generation. That's what we're dubbed, you know, the 70s, 80s kids. You know, the losers, the skateboarders, the, the video game players, the slackers, you know, the X generation. And and so, like I think the lyric says, you know, they've been telling us all, all along we're the X generation. Now it seems we're the voice of a nation. Um, haunted by the ghosts of our father's past, we've been suffering far too long. Because now we've inherited all these guys that were talking shit about us. 
They created all these problems, global warming, war, famine, you know, greed, corporate mm -hmm. greed, and now we have to, um, we have to deal with it. The next generation has to clean the fucking mess. Uh, it was pure rebellion against the hippies and the heavy metalers and just society. It was just fuck you. And there was very few punk rockers. And when you walked down the street with a black flag shirt, people knew you were a punk rocker and they would say, hey, fuck you, you little bastard, you know, and they really, they really didn't like it. And that was the whole idea, walking down the street thinking, yeah, nobody likes me. And that was awesome. And, you know, now you go to the mall, you can buy a Green Day shirt, buy some hair dye, buy a spike bracelet, buy a belt, you know, some pants, walk out and, hey, I'm punk rock. And that's the difference. Like, it's a way of life. It's about, it's about standing up for something. It's about fighting against the system. It's not about going to the fucking mall and getting an outfit and then being into um, Screamo one year later and then being into hip hop the next year and getting a new outfit in the garage. So I think the good thing about, the good news about punk rock today is that there's hardly any record labels now, no one record stores, and, and so you have to, no one's getting money to make records, so now the kids are back to the roots. They're yeah, making the record totally. in the garage, they're putting the record out themselves, they're walking the streets saying, here, just like 1980 with Black Flag, you know, and, and, and the Circle Jerks of Descendants. It's like you got it handed to you by the drummer of Descendants at school. Hey, Fletcher, check it out. Actually, you know, you have Green Day selling 20 million records, and then everyone's like, oh, I'm a punk rocker, I listen to Green Day. Well, no, you're probably not a punk rock, you just listen to Green Day. Anyone that saw you that didn't like you, and didn't understand you, and didn't understand the Dead Kennedys, you know, maybe at a party you're going to get beat up by the by the big football players and, and you know the teachers and the cops and so many many times you know you would go to a party with five of your friends and they'd say get the fuck out of here you fucking punk rock faggot and we'd say fuck you and then hey let's go sometimes there was too many of them so we would just go up the street and then throw like bottles through the windows of the house and run you know and those big big guys but you know so and the cops were the same way so you had a bad reputation. But that's what made it cool and made it feel good is that you, you know, you had you had a you had a place and you had a family and you know. Yeah, I see them all the time. I talk to them. And, you know, I see them on Facebook. They come to our concerts. Some of the guys are in bands. Uh, the original drummer Pennywise. That's where we started our original band. Connie and Hundred was the, on the lot. Was was the the house of of the original drummer of Pennywise, and we lived in the back room and practice here and party oh, yeah. here. So, yeah, it was a family, and, and you felt really close to those guys, and all of them, pretty much everybody there is still good friends. Want to hear Sublime? I put on Sublime. If I want to hear Ramones, I put on Ramones. If I put on the Ramones record and I hear them singing 50s doo-wop, I'm going to say, what the fuck is this? Yeah. Where's my favorite band? So. You know, I mean, it doesn't always win you new fans over because, you know, you're sticking to the same style all the time. Like, yeah. maybe if we wrote a more poppy song or we did this or we followed the emo trend a little bit or Blink-182, you know, we could write that song, but we don't want to. We want to write it anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Different elements for the real yeah. Pennywise fan is in there to make yeah. it interesting. Every album, I think, sounds different. And of course, similar, but different. You know, and that's why when I put in a new No Effects album, I like it.